Some pretty strong beats when it came to the top and the bottom line. But as we mentioned, the stock's down almost 5% right now. After the call, its new CEO just reiterating guidance. Is what you heard on that call, is it changing your price target and your rating for this company? Yeah, it, 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 we did raise our price target um, slightly this morning as we went out to uh, calendar 24 numbers to, to base our price targets um, with a pretty, you know, a pretty steep multiple already. It uh, doesn't change our hold rating or our, you know, slightly more cautious view, I would say, um, versus the street, just given where our estimates are falling. Um, for fiscal 24, we're going to wind up being, um, you know, below the street in terms of looking uh, out to the next fiscal year. All right. So, Andy, explain this one to me. The street isn't happy with what uh, Locksman Nara Simmons had to say, but it actually caused you to raise your price target. What did you hear that made you feel bullish? It really wasn't anything incremental. It was just, again, uh, looking out to calendar 24. This is the time of year where we move all our price targets out um, to um, the next year, um, where we had been previously looking at, um, you know, at calendar 23. Um, our, our relative caution, you know, comes from, again, what, what they didn't do, which was raise um, the outlook for this year. There's also moderating same store sales in the U.S. Uh, back to that seven to nine percent range after a very strong 12 percent quarter uh, here in the 2Q. So give us a sense. Uh, I want to get into the numbers a little bit more um, beyond same store sales and obviously revenue and EPS, the, the basic things. Was it another metric that you were looking at that gave you a really positive feeling about this coffee chain? Yeah, I mean, the margins uh, are recovering, and they did recover more strongly um, than expected, which provided some of the upside in both um, the Americas as well as international. The problem is, is that the Americas margin was boosted by about 180 basis points of one-time items that won't recur going forward, and the international margins were boosted by a faster-than-expected recovery in China. Uh, particularly in March when uh, same-store sales were up 30 percent. So they kind of pulled forward, they think, some of the recovery and okay. margin in China. So, Andy, uh, double question here for you. How big of an impact is the shadow of Howard Schultz, and what does this report tell us about the U.S. consumer? Well, I think, I think Howard came in and, you know, stabilized the organization at a, at a critical time um, when there was some unrest um, with their partners, they continue to make progress um, with partner turnover down uh, nine percentage points versus the uh, the 2Q a year ago. And this is very important for productivity and margins going forward. Uh, the challenge is, is they also talked about some incremental reinvention plan investment. The reinvention plan was, um, you know, part of what Howard termed um, the renewal of focus on the partners, um, you know, IE team members at Starbucks. So G&A is going to run higher uh, related to partner investment and tech investment. I think that surprised the street a little bit. But in terms of the American consumer right now, um, really, you know, solid uh, kind of numbers. We are a little bit more concerned going forward as we move into the latter part of the year that the consumer may start to manage uh, expenditures, okay. particularly in the afternoon day part at Starbucks, which is kind of what they saw in terms of weakness back uh, before the great financial crisis in 06, 07.